Sometimes I wonder where I get the strange uh, shapes and designs that end up in my sketchbook. For instance, here I was I needed to get across the idea of lots of alien soldiers marching away. Well, where exactly did this shape come from? Well, it might have come from a lot of places, but after thinking about it for a while, I thought, you know what, I think this shape comes from this guy. Well, who is he? Well, that's the story I'm going to tell you right now. Because whenever I'm stuck in my sketchbook and I have to think of some strange designs or an alien or a statue, I actually have a little bit of homesprung inspiration. I can look at these uh, different carvings and use them for inspiration. Now these carvings were made by my great-grandfather. That's this gentleman here with this nice hat, and I actually have a hat just like that, which I wear whenever I go outside. My great-grandfather was born in the Philippines in 1898, and he lived to be a hundred. He came to the United States, I think around 1922, and he, uh, served in World War II, and during that time, uh, on the battleship, he would carve, or well, he carved, um, figurines out of soap. Many years later, he retired, and he tried, uh, different arts, such as, uh, leather work and painting. Some of those paintings, uh, have survived, but I mostly remember him from all of these carvings which he made and painted and varnished. There are many of these carvings scattered throughout my family, and since I've decided to make YouTube videos, whenever I visit family members I will be sure to point out these carvings and make little videos about them so that we have some documentation about them. Now, um, I have a couple of other artifacts from my great-grandfather. Here is a New Testament in Tagalog. This book is uh, very old, so I, I, I don't really want to open it with one hand. It's very fragile. And I also have um, this book, which uh, was from uh, a lodge, of which is a part, Rituals in Tagalog, and we have his name here. And what's interesting about this book is that each page is typed, as in typed on a typewriter. And these may be the original typed pages, which were later bound into a book. In which case, this book is completely uh, unique, because no two typed pages are probably exactly the same. And of course, it was bound and has his name on it. And of course, I have all of these different items here. Now, um, he mostly worked on natural uh, figures. There are some uh, exceptions to that, but just going with the ones that I have here, um, you know, we, we have ducks, we have a crane, we have um, an eagle. I th I'm, I'm betting he started making these at the uh, bicentenary, and some other animals. We also have uh, essentially a toy. This is carved out of a single piece of wood, and it has a lump inside which cannot escape. And he also made, uh, he carved lamps. And so often in my artwork, when I need to have a statue in the background, or if I just need to fill in some space, a lot of times I will make sort of a little face on a statue like this, because this is something which I have seen my whole life. And this just adds some flavor. And of course I, I tend to do a lot of cross-hatching and patterns, which we also see in his artwork. Now, one thing that I have not been able to discover about his artwork uh, is really um, how, how many sources uh, went into them. I figure many of these designs he might have found in books of carving. Many of these designs exist in many different forms among my relatives. So there are many different versions of the crane and different versions of the lion, I've seen different versions of the eagle, so he was definitely working with uh, similar motifs. Um, but I have noticed that when I look at Appalachian carvings that I also see similar designs. 
So I think there may be um, a common source. I, I, I think he, he was looking at lots of pictures and perhaps he was inspired. On the other hand, there is a Thai restaurant in town which has carvings in it, and some of those carvings are very similar in form to this crane um, and some other of his carvings. So I'm thinking there were uh, a variety of sources that inspired him. Now this uh, fellow, this I'm going to say kind of a tiki fellow, um, might have come from a different source of imagination. Now, so there are lots of questions that I have about uh, what inspired him, and I, I would like to find out more about that as far as possible. And of course, I would love to document as much of his artwork, which still exists. Now, every year I go to the state fair because I enter um, various things in the contests. And in one place of the state fair, there is a place called the Village of Yesteryear, where there are um, artisans who keep alive uh, you know, old crafts. And one of them is a uh, craftsman from the Appalachians. I can't remember his name. I have his business card. I'll, I'll, be, I'll of course, I'll see him in a few months. And he does lots of carvings. This is his work, and. Many of his de larger designs are not unsimilar to these. They definitely have a different flavor to them. And um, some of his he paints in very bright colors. Um, this uh, craftsman also does a lot of other things like fishing lures and things that are uh, definitely meant to be toys. But others of his designs are, are not too dissimilar. I think if this were larger, it would not be dissimilar to what my great-grandfather made. Unfortunately, my great-grandfather never made a snail, and he never made a caterpillar. At least as far as I can tell. These little figurines I keep in my art studio to give me inspiration, um, and also to remind me of my great-grandfather, who, whom I actually do remember. Um, I, I remember asking him to speak in Tagalog, so I, I have some memories of that. And I do remember asking my, my great-grandfather to carve me a penguin. Unfortunately, he passed away before he could do that. He did live to be a hundred, and he did make many wonderful carvings um, for the family and for friends, and he was very free with giving them away. So sometimes I think if I were not interested in comics that perhaps I would be a carver, because I am... I, I do love wood. I like the feel of it and and painting it and there, there's something very nice about wood. But I am instead doing comics. But then again I do comics on paper and I do paint them. So it's not so dissimilar and I definitely take inspiration from him. So this is just uh, uh, an element of my artwork which is it's kind of hard to put into words. I think it's easier just to show people these carvings and uh, tell a little bit about their history and that can explain a little bit of the different influences that we see in my drawings, the different shapes and things. Anyway, I will talk to you later. Goodbye.